Welcome to Model of the Month. So first of all, I want everyone to go to Edit and then to Preferences and just search for Node Wrangler. This is a tool that we will be using later on. So first of all, delete everything. Shift A and select Cube. And now we have a cube. This is gonna be our rock. So the default view is object mode. Pressing tab takes you to edit mode. Press A to select everything and then right click and press subdivide. This little tab also shows us how much we can subdivide by. Just choose any amount. And then I want you to come to this sculpting section. In the sculpting editor, we're gonna press the snake hook tool, which just allows us to grab things out. Pressing F makes the tool bigger. And after a while, you'll have a pretty good looking rock. Press the grab tool to bring things back in order. And then we're gonna go back into layout mode where we can press tab to go into edit mode. And then Alt Z will go into X-ray mode. And then you can press G to grab out. X-ray just selects the front and back vertices. And there you have a somewhat kind of rock. Pressing Shift D to duplicate it and then S to scale it down. Now we're gonna modify this smaller rock, which we press the spanner, which is the modify section. Add a modifier and it, we're gonna use decimate. This reduces the amount of faces on an object. So by clicking here and selecting statistics, it shows all the faces in the scene. If you just wanna see one object, make sure you hide everything else. So with this rock, we're gonna right click it, snap, select a cursor. If your cursor isn't in the middle, press shift C. And now we can adjust how many faces this object has, simplifying it in the process. You'll notice in edit mode, we can't apply this, but in, if we press tab and go to object mode, then that simply fixes that. So now we have, instead of a rock, a gemstone kind of looking object, but we just need a material. So we click here for the material section, press new, and this is gonna be our new material. We could just simply press base color, image texture, and apply an image, and this will go all over your object, but you won't see it because there's four view modes in Blender, the wireframe, the object mesh, and the material and the render. So if you click on this viewport shading icon, you will see the material you just applied, but it might have applied a little funny, which is why we use UV maps. So come down here and right click this horizontal line and we're gonna click horizontal split. Then we're gonna press this icon and click shader editor. Now this handles all the materials involved with your object. Remember to install Node Wrangler at the beginning of the video, and then we're gonna press this green box, Control Shift T, and that's gonna allow us to select every single material map that is involved in this texture. So if you wanna see how your object looks with full PBR, five out of five textures, this is how you do it. Note, it won't render like this, but I'll get into that later. First of all, we just wanna fix the UV wrapping. So we wanna right click down here and press vertical split. Then we're gonna open the UV editor by pressing that button again, UV editor. And this is the final material file for our one object. So we're gonna press image, new, name it, go 512 by 512 because that's efficient. And we're gonna end up with this black square. Now in edit mode, press A and we're gonna select all the vertices by doing that. Come to UV and press smart UV unwrap. Set the islands to one and press OK. You should see these appear on your black image. That is the basics of UV unwrapping, but it should help with texture positioning a little bit. Pressing Shift D to duplicate these gemstones around. And a little trick is select the object, press G, and then press X, Y, or Z to drag it on that axis shortly after. It's really handy. Also, clicking the objects and pressing Shade Smooth can help with the texture look. But again, it's not gonna render like this. I'll get into that later. But yeah, so at any point, repeat this process until you have one final idea that's all together and then we're ready to move on. Now, I'm just gonna repeat the texturing process with the rock object by clicking on it, creating a new material, pressing the green box, Control Shift T, selecting the appropriate texture maps. And when I go to UV unmap this rock, you'll notice that even when I press Shade Smooth, the, the UV wrapping stretches the texture a little bit. So let's fix that. So if you have Node Wrangler, it sets up these nodes for us, these mapping nodes where you can use Generated or the UV. We're using UV and we can adjust the scale and positioning of the texture, but it doesn't fix the stretching. So in edit mode, select these icons, choose the face, and we're gonna press Alt Z to get out of X-ray mode that we might be stuck in. So we can click just this face on the surface, right click, press subdivide, and that's going to divide the material across the texture. 
Now we have a final result and we're ready for phase two. So duplicate the collection by right clicking it and just call this phase two. And in object mode, I want you to select all the gems and right click them and press join. So that just has gems and then they're separate from the rock. And now we are ready for phase two. So phase two is about having things in elements and then preparing that into one mesh, which is phase three, one final object, one texture. But there's one thing we have to fix every time we make an object in Blender, which is the normals. By going to mesh and edit mode, normals, recalculate outside, this will fix issues like having holes in your objects in source two. So by coming over here and clicking this needle icon, we can see the direction the materials are pointing. If the materials are pointing inside, like I've just changed it to, then when the source two engine renders your model, you've told it that these faces are supposed to be displaying materials on the inside and on the outside. And this is what it looks like. See how there's holes in the model? There's not actual holes. We're just seeing the back of those faces because they haven't been flipped the correct way. So again, pressing this icon, activating that needle image will show you the faces of the normals. And then we're ready for the final merging of our object, which combines everything into one. So we have one final object with correct normals. Now this isn't the efficient way of merging two objects together, but the file size of this object is so tiny that we can afford to do it the lazy way here. And we're just keeping things basic for now, but it's time to make our final material file instead of having two separate ones. If you do the wrong UV unwrapping, like not selecting all the vertices, this is how your material will turn out. And you'll wonder why it didn't paste correctly. So make sure you select in edit mode, press A, all the vertices, and then go UV, smart UV project, islands to one, okay. And that will give us a correct UV map. But we still have two textures. We have the rock and the gemstones because we haven't baked them into one material file. And we can do that by first going into the shading editor of the gem rock, shift A, and then searching image texture, and we'll get this orange image box. Now, we want to link this by pressing the drop down to our UV black square that we have over here. So the gemstone has this orange block that's not connected to anything. You wanna make sure it's selected. And then we do the exact same thing for the rock. So we can actually come in here and just copy and then paste. And that's telling both these textures that I want you to print out onto this UV map, which is our final material. So once we've done that, we come over to the render section, set our engine to cycles, scroll down to here, change the bake type to diffuse, turn off direct and indirect lighting because we just want the color of the material. And if selected to active is on, then it's not gonna bake properly because we are only doing one texture. Selective to active is for multiple things. Making sure we're in object mode and then we just press bake. Now, if it doesn't show up, try going image and saving the image because sometimes it takes a while for me to render out. Just cause it's black doesn't mean it's not there. Now we can delete our previous two textures and we can apply this new material to our one object. Just press new material base color image texture, and we load in the texture that we just baked. So just open that up and it should apply one texture to one object and we have our final model. Now we're ready for phase three. So with our one object selected and everything else hidden in the scene, go file, export, FBX. And for source two, we wanna make sure this path mode up here says copy. By default, it will say auto, but we need it to say copy and we need to make sure this icon next to it is activated. Having that activated helps the source to model doc associate textures that are supposed to go with your model. So now we need to open the material editor, create a new material, file, save as, and I save my materials with my models in my game mode. So locate to that folder and save this new material file in there. It's gonna be empty. And that's why we're gonna drag our FBX model that we just exported and our new image texture that we just made into our game modes model file. Name it whatever you want load it into the first layer of the material file, save it again, and you now have a source to material texture for your model. Now, open model editor. I am using Steam VR, so it may look a little different if you're using Sandbox, but open the model we just exported. You're gonna see a wireframe, don't worry. Go to model, add material remap, click this drop down menu, click material remap, click this drop down menu, select the one texture that should have exported, then click the name, and then back over here, clicking the magnify icon, scrolling down to the material and file save as. And we should have a finished model 
ready for source two. So coming into the hammer editor, loading up a map, pressing the entity tool, searching for prop static, clicking on the floor, and then coming over to the magnifying glass, which is the world model, searching for our model. And then as you can see, this took a lot of attempts to figure out, finally selecting it, and it's ready to be loaded in game. Now, this is big because the scaling might be off. You're gonna have to play with the scaling based on your game. So just go back in, press S, scale it down, make it a little smaller, and you should be good to go. And if you're worried about file size, well, just so you know, these turned out to be 200 kilobytes and this was the lazy method. And one last thing, the reason why these material files look different from when they were in Blender, we only exported one texture map, which was the color map, also known as sometimes the diffuse map or the albedo map. So we have one out of five texture maps. We're missing the normals, ocular occlusion, some others. But that's for a whole nother video. This is just the basics. This has been model of the month where we make a new model every month. Feel free to send in yours and show me on the forums or the discord of Sandbox. And we might see your model in the next video. So until then, I'll see you next time.